Thank you, Ness. Thank you, everyone, and the uh, organizers of this great event and sponsors, and my friend Bikin for inviting me for this event. It's a great pleasure and the burden to speak to you today about the plight of my people, the Uyghurs. The Chinese regime is waging a war on religion, free thought, culture, and the Uyghur ethnicity. It is China's war on women, on children, on the freedom and the democracy as right now, with the mounting horrific evidence, we cry out as one to stop this modern genocide and the slavery. Let these words pierce the ears of all who hear it. Genocide, slavery. Uyghurs, may our name also pierce not only to your ears, but your hearts. Our beautiful people are now this Chinese chauvinistic racist regime's problem. Our refusal to consent to their totalitarian evils means in the eyes of the Chinese government that we must be exterminated. There are too many witnesses to their atrocious crimes. These crimes are too numerous and weighty to mention all, but let me just name a few. Concentration camps, indoctrination, torture, harsh prison sentences, forced marriages, mass rape, Orwellian surveillance, child abduction, human trafficking, slavery, organ harvesting, crematoria, and genocide. Uyghur women's bodies are being the battleground of this genocide, where the CCP forced to lie them and they forced to give them abortions, to erase the Uyghur population. The birth rate has dropped more than 50% in the sum of the the mostly Uyghurs populated areas. The Chinese embassy to United States publicly celebrated this genocidal effort on a Twitter and claiming their forced birth control policies liberated Uyghur women from being baby making machines. Some context on the Uyghurs. We are an ethnic group with a long history in Central Asia. Our homeland was formerly known as East Turkestan. It is now called Xinjiang, which means New Territory, a colonialist name. The region's national, na natural resources make it a target for exploitation. China occupied our homeland, the Chinese Communist regime, occupied our homeland in 1949. And what began as assimilation now has escalated into a genocide and the enslavement today. The regime has developed a model for slavery and the genocide that has allowed them to efficiently erase a group of people, all while making a fortune, the bodies of the Uyghurs are exploited in every way possible in order to create profit for China. Their organs are harvested and being sold. Their hair is shaved and sold to the hair extension and the wig industry. There, has, there was a 13 tons of human hair, 13 tons of human hair in one shipment seized by the U.S. Customs in 2021. And how many the Uyghurs does this represent? The Uyghurs are taken from their homes, blindfolded, 
and crammed into trains and shipped across China to work in the labor-intensive factories where they are subject to a life of making consumer goods as slaves. Millions of Uyghurs have been arbitrarily detained in concentration camps under the guise of re-education. But according to witnesses and the leaked government documents, those so-called schools means armed guards, barbed wire, overcrowded rooms, malnutrition, dehydration, and the poor san san sanitations. It means being uprooted from their culture and religion and taken from families to be brainwashed into a total submission through mental and the physical torture to the communist Chinese government. China claims these camps are vocational training centers and constructed with intentions of poverty alleviation. This is a lie. There are university professors, successful business owners, famous writers, singers, athletes, and the young children, as well as elderly, none of them who needs any kind of job skills. The Chinese government itself has institutionalized slavery, and the Uyghurs have nowhere to go. Their passports and the documents have been confiscated, and there's no way to escape. Today, almost 20 major industries in our global supply chains and the more than 80 global brands are tainted with Uyghur slave labor. China is the largest exporter of tomato paste. 70% of it comes from the Uyghur region and it made with Uyghur forced labor. China is the largest exporter of cotton. More than 80% of the cotton is the, um, comes from the Uyghur region and it's hand-picked by Uyghur slaves. According to a recent report that virtually the entire automobile industry is tainted, again, with Uyghur slave labor. We are building our new world with the slave labor as well. We must call out the solar panel industry and the EV batteries that use the future as an excuse to ignore the human rights tragedy. And we need to urge them to value ethics and humanity rather than profit and remind them a green future can be attained without sacrificing the lives of Uyghurs. I came here and speak to you today out of necessity and I became a full-time activist out of desperation. Five years ago, I was just a mother with a successful career. I never imagined today I will be traveling around the world and exposing China's genocide and the slavery. My sister, Gulshan Abbas, was taken only six days after my first public speech in Washington, D.C. in September 2018. She's a retired medical doctor. She's not a politically active, just a living, ordinary, peaceful life in Urumqi, the capital city in Xinjiang. She was taken to silence me. And now, for past four years and eight months, she's paying the price for my activism as an American citizen. Most of the world is silent, from Hollywood celebrities to famous talk show hosts and the world leaders and the athletes, everyone who are usually so vocal against any kind of social injustice. Rightfully, they should. But they are voiceless against China's modern genocide and the slavery. It's silent but with the blood money from my people's sweat and the tears. Brands like Nike, Adidas, Volkswagen, Zara, and Hugo Boss, the many, many more. 
are using Uyghur forced labor and not only making all of us complicit, but also turning you and the me and the all of us are enablers of this genocide. My sister could have made that shirt on your back, that Zara purse you are using, or shoes that you love, and the, even the car that you are driving. We know too well that what happens when the world sits silent, but now we are all witnesses. We know that multinational corporations are using Uyghur slave labor, at least four of them with ties to the Holocaust. Today we know where this leads and we need to do something. If you think this model for genocide and the slavery begins and ends with Uyghurs, you are wrong. This is only the beginning and our homeland is just a test case. There are facial recognition cameras at every corner and the mobile device usage is tracked at all times. The Chinese regime is using our people as an unlimited supply of data to strengthen AI algorithm that identify race, ethnicity, and the predict dissenting behavior, which they are exporting already more than a dozen countries around the world. A leaked government document confirmed thousands of Uyghurs were detained in only one day based on the recommendations of an AI algorithm. To control a slave, the oppressor will use any means necessity to control them into submission and strip them of their humanity. That is what the Chinese government has done. The future is at stake. The regime has the power and the motivation to extend these crimes globally, enabling other dictatorships to follow. When humanity's goal becomes a progress for profit at the expense of human rights, we all risk being on the other side of the oppressor. This is an inflection point in time. What world will we leave our children and our grandchildren? Governments and corporations act as through the world economy is dependent on the Uyghur slave labor and the genocide in order to survive. We are done with this lie. We are living in the world today where slavery is an acceptable evil in society. We rely on it only so that we can continue living our lives in ignorance that suits our short-term benefit. The time has come for all of us to collectively take responsibility and to say no more. We must demand that governments stop importing goods tainted with slave labor and to pass legislation with specific language about the Uyghurs. China needs to know that countries will acknowledge the genocide and hold them accountable. As citizens, we need to make it universally unacceptable for companies to be associated with slave labor. It should be a terrible stain on any company's reputation. As consumers, we need to make a real effort to educate ourselves on what is made with slavery and make it unacceptable in our own principles to contribute to this genocide with our monetary support. We can stop this, but it starts with me, you, and all of society waking up and realizing this is a problem we need to solve once and for all. Inaction is not an option. The stakes are way too high. We saw what happened with Holocaust when people failed to take action. They said it was because they didn't know it. The information flow was slow, also they knew what was happening. But this is 21st century. No one can claim the ignorance anymore. I would like to draw attention to the invaluable efforts of Jahar Ilham, 
who is with us here today, a brave Uyghur activist who has been tirelessly working to raise awareness against the CCP's crimes and the highlight the Uyghur forced labor. Her father, Ilham Tohti, a distinguished Uyghur scholar, has been unjustly imprisoned by the Chinese government since 2014 for his peaceful advocacy for Uyghurs. Jauhar and her team will be leading a site event tomorrow morning from 10.30 till 12. And the, uh, I strongly encourage everyone to attend and to learn more about how to advance corporate accountability to address state-imposed Uyghur forced labor. Among so many great people here with us today, I would also like to especially mention Ambassador John Richmond, as he was one of the driving forces behind the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act getting passed and implemented. He worked closely with the US government to advocate for stronger action against Chinese regime. And I'm very privileged to have my friend Ann Basham with us today as well and tirelessly advocates for human rights and the empowers marginalized communities. As the chair of the Task Force on Human Trafficking, she amplifies the voices of Uyghurs and many more. It is an honor to have her here. Again, I'm grateful for her support and the friendship. I want to end my remarks with a quote from American historian Howard Zinn. He said, quote, Historically, the most terrible things, war, genocide, and the slavery have resulted not from the disobedience, but from the obedience, end quote. The never again moment is now for the Uyghurs, and let's live up to our promise, not just for the sake of the Uyghurs, but so our children will not pay the consequences of an illiberal world. Thank you so much.